Fact number four. And this one also came out in the inquiry today. That's why you know I really feel bad that the inquiry is not here. I'm here sir. Ah, you're here. Thank you very much. I, you're. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Ramos. Thank you for being here. No, thank you for being. I hope you didn't miss the other facts. I can repeat them for you later. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. This came out in the inquiry article. It said something like. The MTD borrowed from DBP used the money of the Filipino people for a Malaysian company. First of all, let me just say, when foreign investors come to the Philippines and invest money and raise finance and borrow money, can they borrow from local banks or not? Can they borrow from uh, banks like DBP, etc.? They can, right? They can as long as, number one, there is no government guarantee. Right? That I, the government does not guarantee the private enterprise that they will get paid. And in this case, there is absolutely no government guarantee, whether from BCDA or any other government agency. Absolutely not. And MTD borrowed on commercial terms. Commercial terms, there was no you know, discount on the interest rate. There's nothing like that. They borrowed on commercial terms. And DBP and its charter is allowed to lend on commercial terms. The only guarantee that is present here, which is actually very, very important, not just for BCDA, but for DBP, the lender, is a guarantee from the mother company of MTD. And that it submitted as a requirement of the Development Bank of the Philippines for the loan. There is a guarantee from the mother company that in case MTD Philippines or MTD Barad is not able to pay, the mother company in Malaysia will pay. But there is no guarantee from the national government. So I really, in my mind, I really cannot fathom anything in the loan agreement between MTD and DBP that constitutes something that is disadvantageous to government. In fact, DBP even makes money out of it, right? Because they charge interest. Hindi ba? Now, maybe what you are saying is, since it's funded by the national government, then that is a guarantee. Well, sorry, I'll have to just correct you on that. That's not a guarantee. Why? Because the payment to MTD is contingent upon completion and acceptance. Now, if it's completed and accepted, should the government pay? Why, of course. Of course the government should pay. Hindi ba? Why? Do you think this, this is free? Hindi ba? Of course the government should pay. But it is not a guarantee in the loan. There is no such guarantee. I just want to keep on hammering that. Because I really take offense at the Inquirer article, uh, Marlon. No, I, I know you have sources. It wasn't you. You quoted sources. But, you know, at the very least, you should have asked. May garantia ba to? Ginaranti ba to ng national government na kung hindi mabay na kailangan bayaran? And you would have found out very easily na wala. No? Pero wala eh. So walang, walang ganun sa... So, article. so I'm pointing that out right now. Finally, fact number five. The OGCC, and I will, I will ask Justice Vega to, to, um, to speak more about this, never gave an unfavorable opinion. If you read the OGCC January 30 opinion and you read the dispositive portion at the end, they never said BCDA don't sign. Magian. No. What OGCC did was it gave its comments and suggestions to which BCDA, with the help of its advisors with the, through the Asian Development Bank, addressed and clarified in letters succeeding. And the OGCC, in response to clarifications made by BCDA, unequivocally said, that the provisions of the executed JVA and the legal framework of the project are in compliance with existing laws, rules, and regulations. Now, of, 
I can already anticipate the next question. Eh, sir, bakit nyo pinirmahan? Bakit hindi nyo hinintay na lumabas yung final OGCC uh, clarification nung, uh, I think it was in October? Two reasons. Number one, BCDA, through its own lawyers and legal counsel, believed, believed, I, I, will, I will emphasize the word, believed, that we already addressed the concerns of the OGCC in the final JVA that was signed in uh, January, February of 2018. And in response to this, BCDA made the decision, its business decision, which by the way, is also empowered to do under its corporate charter, and even the OGCC acknowledges that. If you look at the dispositive portion of the, of the OGCC opinion, it says that. BCDA can give due course to this. And the second reason is very simple. Very simple. We were told that we needed to build facilities that we would need for the Southeast Asian Games. Remember, ah, the, the, the proponent submitted a proposal without those sports facilities to be built. It was BCDA who said, we need those sports facilities to be part of this because we will be hosting the 2019 Southeast Asian Games and we need those facilities post-haste. This was 2017 and then 2018. You know how long it takes to construct a 20,000-seater stadium? You know, when the Japanese representatives from the Japanese government visited the New Clark City Stadium earlier this year, they are amazed at the speed and the quality of the work because they were themselves building their own stadium. And you know what the Japanese officials told us? You know, we should, we should have hired you guys to, to build our stadium because it's still not finished and we're having some... Uh, we're, 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 we're having some issues with the timeline. It's not easy um, to our friends in the media to build these facilities, not, let alone build certified facilities. Which, by the way, these facilities have already been certified by both IAAF and FINA. It's not easy. So BCDA, because of the need to build these facilities, decided. And we were able to start and we were able to finish ahead of schedule. It was a business decision on the part of BCDA. However, after the clarifications were made, OGCC said, BCDA, tama yung ginawa nyo. It's really as simple as that. Ito yung sinasabi ko sana, no, before I end. No, na, you know, you cannot take an issue or a project just based on one piece of documentation that, I don't know, someone gave you or you got from an anonymous source. You cannot do that. It's really unfair and irresponsible. You have to understand the entire structure, the entire process by which this was done. And that's really what, you know, what I'm frustrated about. No? Finally, we have facilities for our athletes. You know, you see our athletes, and I really in want to invite all of you there. You, you, you come. You talk to our athletes. Don't talk to me. Don't take my word for it. Talk to our athletes. Ask them. Ask our athletics team. Ask our swimming team, our water polo team, our diving team. Ask them. What do they feel? And what do they think about these facilities? They've been neglected for decades. And now that they have these facilities, which were developed with absolute transparently, a transparency with, through the best advisors that we can get, not through the Asian Development Bank. And yet, with one article, with one, it's just so easy to just say it was meant to defraud government. 
Ang dali, ang daling. And really, it just pains me. No, I'm sorry. No, I, I understand the role of the media. No, but um, it just pains me and, and not to count the timing of all of this. First day, 22 goals. And in the front page of the Inquirer, you have our athletes being hailed, being honored. And yet, the facilities that were built for them after decades of neglect are being attacked unfairly. Why? Because you didn't get enough information. It's, it's, it's so unfair. And I, it, never mind me. Never mind me. Never mind BCDA. We, we, we know what we're doing. BCDA, long before I came in, has been doing this for the last 25 years. Successfully. They've been entering into joint ventures, um, doing privatization projects since 1992 when they were formed. Never mind BCDA. Never mind me, personally. But the effect on our athletes, the effect on our people who, who are there, who, you know, if, yesterday I was there, last night with Secretary Bernard Romulo. There were so many people coming all the way from Pangasinan, Metro Manila, Bulacan, everywhere, just to see the facilities. And all they could say was, wow, finally, meron tayong ganito. Makes you so proud. Especially when Singaporeans, Malaysians, Thais, Indonesians, they tell the athletes, your facilities are fantastic. They're even better than ours. So, you know, this is the reason why I'm here today. I really didn't want to, between you and me, I wanted to do this after the games. But I felt it was incumbent on BCDA to respond to this now. Not for us, but for our athletes and for our people. They've waited long enough for, as the cliche goes, world-class facilities. Long enough. Our athletes have waited long enough. And that's why we're here. That's why we're clarifying all of this with facts. Not with conjecture. Not with quotes from unnamed sources, but with facts. So I hope, you know, we can discuss this, uh, we can talk about this, I'll be open to any of your questions.